interviews with business owners that puts them in front of a global audience. And in behind those shows is a whole range of things, from digital magazines, to social media, to blogging, to email, to lead generation, just a whole range of things. Good morning, everyone, and good evening to those listening across the globe. I'm Tony Lontis, and this is the Everyday Business Show. Thank you for listening. And if you're listening live on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, or Twitter on the Everyday Women's Network or on Binge Networks USA, thank you for joining us today for yet another session of the Everyday Business Show. Now, don't forget that you can download the Tony TV app on Roku, LG, Samsung and smart TVs across the planet. And we are syndicated and streaming globally across the world, across many and multiple TV, plus your socials of Facebook, LinkedIn, etc. If you have any questions about this episode, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We will include attached to this interview all the information about our phenomenal guest today. And before we do that, just something that we've been doing for a little while now, and it's a particular to Australia, it's called our Welcome to Country. And today I want to uh, respectfully acknowledge the people of the Yugamba language region on the Gold Coast, Queensland, Australia, and pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging and recognise the important role that these Indigenous peoples played in our community and the development of Australia. Now, today's show is called Your Network is Your Net Worth, and we are privileged to talk to the amazing woman that is Colleen Biggs. Now, before I introduce you, here's what you need to know. So Colleen is an award-winning business coach who empowers women to be ready to learn and step into their peak performance and to take action so that they expand their influence, attract the right clients and generate more money. She has extensive success and experience in corporate America over the last 30 years, consulting on over 340 business startups, franchising and voluntary national and local community service. She is the author of five best-selling books with the most recent international number one bestseller called Step Into the Spotlight, which talks about expanding your influence and attracting the right customers. She is an elite podcast host of Take the Leap with Colleen Biggs. Colleen built Lead Up for Women from 2018 through to 2021 with over 10,000 women. And she is now the CEO and founder of Leap. She's recently been awarded the 2020 Local Person of the Year and the 2021 awarded Top 10 Businesswoman. Colleen provides women with a community of entrepreneurs that take the leap daily and realise their net worth is their their, rather, their network is their net work. Um, Colleen, welcome to the show. Oh, Tony, thank you so much. It's such an honor to be here. I'm really, I'm really blessed to have this opportunity to speak to your listeners. I'm really grateful that you could um, take time out of your busy schedule to talk to us today. And this is actually our first show back in 23. So it's doubly exciting to have you here. Um, Colleen, I'd like to start the show with a motivational quote. And yours is a particularly good one. When I was reading in, um, last night, I'm like, wow, that's really good. So Colleen's quote is, if learning is beneath you, then leadership is beyond you. Colleen, why does this quote inspire you? I love it, by the way. Um, Because how many times have you said something to someone and they say, oh, I know, or, you know, and, and you're like, well, do you? Because you really? if you knew, then you wouldn't be asking that question, right? Mm-hmm. So I think there becomes a part, a, a time 
in everyone's life where maybe they think they already know it or they know Mm. it all, or there isn't any more expansion room. When we open ourselves up to learning from other people, whether we feel that they're um, levels uh, ahead of us and and beyond us or levels below us. um, uh, And when we, when we reach out and learn from others, there's so much opportunity available to us in the leadership realm. You mm. must learn and continue to be growing or you're dying. We all know that yes. to be able to become the best leaders. Absolutely. Yeah. Who do we learn from? We learn from the best leaders. Everyone we learn from those leaders well. that are out there educating and and using, you know, and giving us knowledge and motivating and inspiring. So I, I really feel that If people think, oh, I don't need to join that group or I don't need to go to that seminar or I don't need to sit in that conference, I don't need to learn anything else. I already know what I need to know to run a business. Mm -hmm. I know how to run a business. It's like, do you? Because if you did, then you would be on top, right? And you're not. So there's a gap of a knowledge of something you don't know. And why don't you go learn that so you can become the best leader? (laughs) Colleen, I... I am a lifelong learner. My curiosity gets the better of me in most instances. And so the concept of stopping learning is quite foreign for me because I know that my curiosity would drive me. And the thing is, you might think that you've sat in just about every marketing or leadership thing that you can go to or listen to, but there is always something, isn't there? Mm -hmm. There's always something in because humans grow and develop, there's always a renewed perspective. So something Mm -hmm. you heard 12 months ago may not resonate the same as it does in 12 months later, because you're not the same person, are you? That's right, because we're continuing to grow. So as we reach new levels, new growth and knowledge and opportunity are available to us. Mm. So just like you, Tony, we're really never done uh, learning. And to me, uh, some of the most in, the most influential leaders are those that continue learning and then pass that knowledge on. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I find that uh, so much makes me curious. I find that the time for communicating and letting like, hey, found this today, hey, check this out, Mm -hmm. that's the piece for me. It's not about the learning because I love the learning and the the curiosity drives me forward. It's about imparting that knowledge to others and that's part and parcel of what, what you do. Colleen, I wanted to go back to the beginning from corporate life and what prompted you into business and why? Um, well, I think God had a lot to do with it. He worked through other people, closed some doors. You know, I uh-huh. worked my way up in corporate America mm-hmm. and really felt like I was on this one path. And I knew whose position I wanted. I was being groomed for it from yeah. my boss. And when my boss left the company and retired, that was a really tough time for me because both of my favorite CEO and my boss all retired within a couple of years. So I felt like I, and these were both gentlemen, I felt like I had lost two of my rocks, two of the people that had taken me under their wing, had really oh. sponsored me and mentored me in corporate America. And I'm so thankful what they taught me that prepared me to be an entrepreneur, but I didn't know that's what I was being groomed yes. and prepared for, but I think they did. Uh And I wanted that position. That was my next natural step. But then a different CEO had stepped into place and they had another plan. So um, a gentleman that I had actually worked with in that company 20 years before that came back to the company in that position. And that kind of locked me out. And they were like, well, don't worry, because we're going to create this amazing position for you over here, which again, became a gift Because I got to go on the road for two years before I left the company and got to visit all my clients. I got to really look at why is this one business so strong in these Mm -hmm. five, you know, indicators and these other businesses aren't doing so great. So I learned from the ones that were doing amazing as entrepreneurs, where their strong points were, what they did differently, why it worked so well and started creating this like standard operation procedures Uh for the, for the actual businesses 
to be able to operate with these new brand standards, right? So that's what I was working on. And I got to go around to all my clients that I had helped them build these businesses, take them out to dinner, spend time with their staff, learn their most intricate secrets of what they do to make their businesses successful. And I did that for two years before I finally decided to leave the company. It was like my farewell tour, but I didn't know it at the time (laughs) till I looked back and I'm so so grateful, Tony, that I had that time with them. And not only did my boss and my CEO groom me, but I got to learn all the secret successes of why, how to run a business as an entrepreneur and what, you know, what it was about staff member, what it was about, Mm -hmm. um, you know, something that they put in place Mm -hmm. um, as a standard in their business and how they Mm -hmm. treated their customers and what made them stand out from the other competitors in the area. So again, more knowledge for me to take out into the the uh, huge ocean of entrepreneurship yes. to not only use it for my business, but then teach other entrepreneurs how to do that. Amazing. Yeah. In thinking about your business and where you are today, I'm sure there's lots of pivotal moments, but can you think about one pivotal moment within your business journey what was that moment about what happened and why was it important what did you learn Colleen well there was one big one not too long yes. ago um and I I originally excuse me um as you were reading my bio mm. it said that I read the I led the community lead up for women for several years that was like my baby coming out of corporate america i built that from the ground up worked so many hours so hard got so much visibility and exposure and was super proud of all that i had built and the successes the women had had and all the visibility that i had given them and it it kind of abruptly changed overnight I had a partner in the business and things went sideways. I won't get into details, but just imagine waking up on a Monday morning, your email doesn't work because the website got shut down and then the bank account's gone and then your email's gone. And this is your business that you had built. So kind of just imagine that. And that's how it felt to me. There's a lot Mm. of details behind the scene and I'm not going to get into those details, but It was, there were many discussions up to that point, but Uh I don't even know if that person realized that shutting down the website was going to shut off so much. And um, I just kind of felt numb and like everything I had worked for was gone. And, um, and I had to kind of stop and rebuild. And I remember my husband said to me, cause I, I just wanted it to go away, you know, and I was like, can we just throw money at this problem? Yeah. And my husband said to me, you, you empower women to fight, to stand up for their voices, to stand up for what they believe in, Mm -hmm. to, to stand up for their businesses, to, to shine. And he said, you can't lay down and, and, and do nothing. Yeah. And that was kind of a pivotal moment for me that even when time gets tough and you don't know what to do and you feel like you're beaten or you're down or there's legal issues or whatever it is, if you're not dying and you're not dead, there's a recovery (laughs) that can come Mm -hmm. from that. Mm -hmm. And so that big lesson, which I knew, but Mm -hmm. we forget all the lessons in our life when something like that happens. Forget and then you're sort of promptly reminded. Yeah. And I was, you know, I, I always say God hits me over the head with a two by four because I'm so stubborn and he, (laughs) he really wanted me to, 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 to probably take a different path or do Uh something, you know, and I had a lot of rebuilding to do brand rebuilding, Mm. website rebuilding. And, you know, this was less than a year ago and I can't even believe how much I've rebuilt and where I'm at Seriously, to walk away from podcasts that had 175 episodes that you've been working on with live radio shows for years. And, you know, there, it was a lot. And I was just like, the other piece was losing, you know, 20,000 followers on Instagram, all these things. Oh my and I, I, I just realized, you know, business pages down and I just realized 
that was all vanity, right? That was, mm. that really wasn't who I was or why I was put on this path to do what I'm doing. So I kind of picked myself up and made a decision and just went into go mode and started rebuilding what I needed to build and mm -hmm. rebuilding. I, I, I rebuilt a different community for the women that were around. And I asked them, do you want to do this or not? And they're like, no, please don't go anywhere. We love, you know, being in a community with you for visibility and mm -hmm. you've offered us so much and we want to stay collaborating and networking. So I just got my VA together and we just hit the ground running and started, you know, rebuilding things with new brands and different names and, yeah. and, um, just built. And that's what I did in 2022. And I mean, my year was amazing. It really yeah. was. And just to think that that was less than a year ago and where I'm standing today, um, your life can change in a day. In a moment. In a heartbeat. And that taught me a lot about trusting myself and trusting my instincts and not relying on other people uh, to support me thinking I needed help to be able to be successful. Mm -hmm. And it's not to say that that wasn't a person that was successful. He absolutely was. I'm saying that I can trust myself mm -hmm. to be successful and I don't need to trust other people. So um, again, another pivotal moment of learning. So yeah. it's a lot. Absolutely. Um, Colleen, in talking about all the startups and all the businesses you've helped, is there one key piece of advice that you always give to them? Well, oh, yeah. Yeah. Every single one, which is <clears throat> I help them find what makes them unique. There is so many businesses out there mm -hmm. and so many of those businesses are similar and mm -hmm. do really, really well. So mm -hmm. when you ask someone, why do you go to that one Starbucks on the corner of, you know, Higley and Ray or whatever, why yeah. do you stop at that one Starbucks every day on your way to work? Or why is that the one coffee shop you go to, right? Or that one deli you go to, or that that one. And it always comes down to the level of the person. It mm -hmm. always comes down to how they're treated, how they're the customer services, right? It comes down to a familiarity and it comes down to a loyalty. Mm -hmm. People are loyal. You know, how yes. many people drink Pepsi versus Coke or how many people wear Nikes versus mm -hmm. Adidas, right? There's this, I was very loyal to BMW. I did not like Mercedes. Yeah. I know that sounds crazy, but I don't like Mercedes vehicles. Yeah. I love BMW, BMW vehicles. So there's a loyalty aspect that comes down to that. Mm -hmm. And that has everything to do with how you treat people. Yeah. So when you treat someone a certain way, I always tell everyone, treat someone the way you would want to be treated as a client. Yeah. One of the best exercises we could do is turn the hat around when, it, when a client will say, well, what do you think of this price or this program or this product? Or, uh, you know, this is how I was thinking of releasing it. This is my marketing plan. I'll say, great. Now I want you to be the consumer of your product. Mm. Would you buy it for that amount of money? Mm. Would you? Is that messaging catching your heart? Is it pulling you? Is it solving a problem for you? Does it clearly share that you need to take action? Mm. You know, so when we move into the client position and the consumer mm. position of our business, we get a different look yeah. of what our products are. So I challenge them to do that, but I would say, it's the, how do you stand out in the marketplace? Mm -hmm. What makes you different? And it's not price. I promise you, no, it's, it's never price because someone will go down and buy a $150,000 car tomorrow because they're mm -hmm. loyal to a brand while you're still over here, you know, wanting to buy the $20,000 car, right? Mm -hmm. So they will have no qualms with spending $150,000 for a car because yeah. they're loyal to the brand. brand. So loyalty has a lot to do with it. How do you build the relationships with the consumers starting on the first time you touch them and, and have those conversations throughout and nurture that relationship to where they become a raving fan? That's number yes. one. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, Colleen, 
amongst all the things that you do, you still try to find time to write. You're an international best-selling author. <laughs> Going back to the start, what was the thing that prompted you to write and how has writing changed your life and the lives of others? This will not be the answer anyone's thinking I'm going to give. <laughs> <laughs> when I became an entrepreneur, Mm -hmm. And uh, started up the uh, the women's group lead up for women. Mm -hmm. I went around to 10 cities in 10 states and I needed to get physically in front of people. This was 2019. Yeah. So I flew around all these cities and states and brought in all of these local speakers, women, mm -hmm. and we would do a luncheon. $75 ticket, lunch was served, uh -huh. three hours networking, plus women speaking on a panel. It was amazing, right? Mm -hmm. However... It was not sustainable because yeah. it was very expensive for me to fly around all these places. You can imagine at $75 a ticket, yeah. I'm brand new. I'm not making a lot of money off of these. And so I immediately had to get this thing online and uh -huh. have every, all these, you know, cause I was national. I never started mm -hmm. local mm -hmm. and I had women in Canada that were interested. So I brought it online and then boom, yeah. the, um, the pandemic hit. Which yeah. again, I was led to bring it online because it just mm -hmm. wasn't sustainable for me to fly around. Everywhere I went and people I would talk to that were entrepreneurs, they said, um, you know, if you really want to make, make it big in media and you want to be able to get more exposure, you're going to have to write a book. And I was like, I'm not writing a book. <laughs> I'm not writing a book. And they said, um, because I got invited on a radio show and then that radio show asked me to be a uh, live radio show host. And I said, no, thank you. I, I, I'm not a live radio show. I have no, I, I'm coming from corporate America. Mm -hmm. I'm a good trainer. I'm a good speaker. I, mm -hmm. I know how to start businesses. I'm good. I don't know how to be a host of a radio show. And they said, well, we have 3.2 million listeners. And most of them are women. I was like, sign me up, right? Where do I <laughs> sign up? I'll learn. I'll figure very, it out. Very fast. So after I did that, and then people kept saying a book, I was like, I, I don't know how to write a book. I think it would be cool to write a book. And then I think about all these amazing authors like Mark Victor Hansen and mm -hmm. people I've even had like on my own podcast and interviewed mm -hmm. them, you know, yeah. all these amazing authors that I've read, written, you know, read all their books. I'm just a book crazy connoisseur. Yeah. And someone said, you got to have a book. And one of the ladies as fate would have it that I brought in, in Ohio, I think, no, it was in, yeah, in Ohio that led one of my panels, the women's panel, is doing an anthology book. Mm -hmm. And she said, would you like to be part of this book? You could become a published author. And I was like, that's on my bucket list of mm -hmm. I have to become a published author, people said, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what got me into writing. And mm -hmm. um, I loved it. I yeah. loved it. And all the women that I got to meet, a lot of them became members of my community. I collaborated with them. I mean, it was just this great way to meet people too, mm -hmm. you know? So since then, I decided to do my own book. I've been in other, you know, books. I decided to publish my own journals mm -hmm. um, on Amazon where people can buy them and they're mm -hmm. journals that you can write in. Yes. So I just kind of went crazy. And then within <laughs> like a year and a half, two years, I've added another book. Now I'm up yeah. to another one I just did this year, a gratitude mm -hmm. book. And that was kind of a tribute to my husband. But mm -hmm. um, I can tell you that writing to me feels good. And yes. Why we need to write is this. Mm. It's it's kind of the same reason of why we need to speak up and speak yes. out. Because there are individuals on this earth that can only hear a Absolutely. message from you. From you. How many times have you heard someone say something? You're like, oh, I totally get that and it impacted you. And the person sitting next to you is like, I've been telling you that for five years. Yep. And you're like, <laughs> well, I never heard it from you, but that makes sense. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So we, I believe we have a right, like we have an obligation yes. to share our knowledge. We have an obligation to share our to wisdom, share our message, share our wisdom, to write the things that will impact mm -hmm. um, and change other people's lives. And so I just feel like we have that obligation and I will continue writing books and continue doing anthologies and, mm -hmm. and eventually do my own book right now. People have asked me, why aren't you going to write your own book? When are you going to write your own book? And I feel like I have some more learning and experiences. I mean, can you imagine mm -hmm. if I would have done it last year that I never would have yes. written about what I went through, yes. you know, so yes. 
you're, I'm still going through some experiences and God will let me know when the right time is right. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm um, crazy, Colleen, but amazing, amazing trajectory, let us say. Why do you think women or female entrepreneurs are the change makers mm-hmm. in the universe? This is one of my fundamental beliefs. I believe that women in this particular decade will change the world as we see and know it. Fundamentally believe it. You work with women. Do you think the same thing? Do you think that if we empower female entrepreneurs, we absolutely change the planet? Thousand percent in my heart. I know that. Um, women are the absolute most powerful beings on earth. I think many men absolutely agree with that as well. I don't believe women exercise that power. Uh Um, Men do. And men do because they've, from our DNA, centuries and yeah, that was their job. I mean, that Mm -hmm. was the survival was for the man to go kill and the woman nurtured. Like if let's just go back to the beginning of time, um, that's how it's always been. So when women decide that it's time for them to step into that role Mm -hmm. of leadership, and most women are already can be scary. Yeah. Just, just, just thinking about it for lots of women is quite a scary and challenging thought. But once you do it, 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 it's the most one of the most powerful things that you can do, isn't it, Colleen? It is. And most of them are already leaders in their family. Most of mm. them are already leaders in their community. They mm. they they run everything. Mm. Most of them are already leaders in their churches. Mm. Um, it's just the business side of things mm-hmm. where women get tripped up a little bit on that. Absolutely. And so that's why I believe really God called me out of corporate America into the entrepreneurship pool to be that guide and that beacon mm. to show them what's possible to to be there to assist them along the way on that journey, because it really has a lot to do with our mindset and our confidence. And once we know we can do something, once we believe we can do something, we really become unstoppable at that point. Mm, So I do believe that there's a whole wave of shift of leadership Mm. and women are rising Mm. up again, not to change the authority of a man no, ever. This is not about not counterbalancing. About mm. It's about women actually stepping up to take that powerful lead for themselves and for their businesses and for the sake of others yeah. and um, just stepping into those roles mm. because we Absolutely. already have most of what we need to do it. It's just the courage and the bravery Great to do and- it moving through the fear yeah 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 that 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 fear of being seen and heard for many women is a part of our our dna and so but once you move past that it's incredible what you can do accomplish who you can meet and the impact that you can have and speaking of impact um colleen can you tell us about leap community what it stands for why it is it's your passions tell us about leap Yeah, Leap um, was born out of the leadership that I really wanted women to step into this whole Mm. leadership, you know, realm that we just talked about. So I created Leap um, because, you know, I had Lead Up for Women before Mm. and Leap stands, it's an acronym. It stands for Lead with Enhanced Acceleration to Reach Ah. Your Peak Performance or Your Mm -hmm. Peak Potential. That's really what it means. And when we leap, Mm. we're this suspension in the air for a little while. We don't Mm. know what's going to happen. I think Mm. that is the scariest part for all of us. It's kind of like when you're not a mom and then you get pregnant, there's this like time where you don't know what it's going to be like or what it's going to, you know, and we just had kind of have to hang out until we have the baby yeah. and then you kind of land on your two feet. Right. And yeah. You try and, and then you figure it out. Life. That's all we do. <laughs> yeah. We figure it out. That is what it's like um, when we take the leap. It's why my mm. podcast is named that. It's why yes. the community, the leap community is named that. I want women to think to themselves, when I join the LEAP community, 
I'm, I am declaring that I'm ready to take the leap, that I'm going to take the leap and talk to more people than I normally talk to. I'm going to collaborate more. I'm going to ask people to open doors for me. I'm going to ask to be on that podcast. I'm going to ask to get that interview. So when we're taking the leap, we are essentially saying we're ready to risk. We're ready to go. We're ready to, I want to do this, right? I'm going to, I'm going to take that risk. I'm going to take that leap. So, um, but I, I know that in my programs and working with my clients, the reason why there's an acceleration piece in there is because it's no different than a golf coach, football coach, um, you know, soccer coach, Mm -hmm. tennis coach. When you have a coach that's teaching you how to, play tennis and they practice with you all the time, you're going to become a more advanced, better tennis player faster because you're having someone coaching with you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Kalina, I said, someone asked me something about coaching uh, just recently. And I said, I've always had coaches and they said, really? And I'm like, absolutely. If you want to go further, faster, get yourself a coach or a mentor, someone like Colleen, because you don't know what you don't know. You don't see what you don't see. That external person championing you, supporting you, leading you, giving you large and vast amounts of wisdom, that takes you farther, faster. And for women, that can be a really uh, profound leap kind of calling. Absolutely. It it really is. And I'm so glad that you said it so eloquently, Tony, because um, along our path, I've had business coaches, still have one. I've had speaking coaches. I've had spiritual coaches. Mm-hmm. I still have a health coach, yeah. <laughs> you know, and I was a personal trainer. Mm-hmm. So it's not like I don't know, but I need someone there to keep can kind of keep me in check and guide me. So yeah. it totally about that accountability. So for me, I think that is one of the most important pieces. And the one mm-hmm. thing about the leap community, besides the visibility is what makes it so different than any other community, because mm-hmm. we need that visibility for our brand to be seen, to be heard, to be visible. And that's what these platforms are in the leap community. Mm-hmm. We have all the love, all the support, all the collaboration, all the fun events, you know, all those things, but it's the visibility that really makes it different. I just mm-hmm. love the women it attracts and yes. you know, how they want to help each other, how they They're freely give advice aren't they, to each connections. other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it's very important to me that that we're we're hardwired for connection. Yeah. Humans mm-hmm. are hardwired for connection. So yeah. you need some sort of connection. And um I know I know for myself, um large volumes of my day are spent online. So I get my connection via online means yes Uh, but for many people and then I need to actually decompress and be completely away from people uh to (laughs) get get up this is what I say Tony I say I love to socialize with people but when I don't that's I it. won't yeah I'm (laughs) I'm absolutely and it's not about not liking humanity it's actually no. about making sure that i am in the space on monday morning to give from my best mm-hmm. self and if i don't well, take that time out i'm not as i'm not as helpful i'm not as good all of those things so um yeah. that being wired and and then that connectiveness of community is important and conversely then you have to work out what works for you in terms of decompressing um that beautiful supportive creative wonderful connected community you've created colleen is helping women across the globe isn't it Mm -hmm. yeah i mean it's a curated group and women just keep inviting women that they know you know i i i'm the strongest believer of this because i teach what happens to me right Mm. i teach what what success happens. So when, when I have success doing something, I teach it to other people. I share it freely, right? Uh I don't hold anything back. I want everyone to have the same success. Yeah. When you show up as yourself, Mm -hmm. when you don't apologize for what you have to say, when you don't apologize for your beliefs, when you have dance parties at your networking events, like I do every month, I always start out with a dance party and some women will show up and say, did you know you were sharing your screen and I can hear your music? And I'm like, yes, this is a dance party. So you don't Mm -hmm. have to dance, but I am going to dance because it raises my vibration. Mm -hmm. 
I attract the right women to me that love that type of energy that mm. want to be in a group with women that are like that. Right. Yeah. So I attract those types of women and they hang out in that group. Yeah. They will um, collaborate in that group. I don't attract women that don't vibrate at that vibration yeah. that don't in, you know, enjoy the types of events that I run yeah. that aren't looking for visibility. I don't attract them. So when we show up as ourselves exactly the way we are, a, it's the most freeing thing you will ever do in your life because mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks about you. It's mm -hmm. all about them. Right. Yes. And, and you get to just be you in all your glory. Yeah. That is so transparent and it's so free. It gives other people others permission. permission to do the same thing. Yeah. And, and that can you imagine a mom yeah. that did that every day? She would just automatically, without saying a word, give her children permission to just be them. Oh, and I don't yes. think that's happening in it, this world. I, Colleen, I don't think yeah. it is either. I yeah, that Permission There's so to, much pressure to perform yeah, and, and so be much a pressure certain to, way. Yeah, look at social media. So much pressure yeah. to look a certain way or yeah. run your business a certain way or act yes. a certain way or whatever it is. And I'm like, forget all that noise. Do what do you want to do? For yeah. you. Who yeah, are yeah. you and what works for you? Yeah. Uh, Colleen, one of the earliest um, lessons for me was to, yes, learn and listen take what you hear but then as my team would say tonify it because yeah. you have to do your unique so the mm -hmm. way that you look at sales for instance is going to be through a tony lens or a colleen lens and that's mm -hmm. not going to work for everyone so it's about taking no. that information <laughs> sitting with it thinking about it and then going okay how's that going to work for me and by I doing have worked that. with so many companies, Tony, that don't yes. get me. And I'm yeah. like, they you should do this and you should do that. And I'm like, no, that doesn't feel mm -hmm. right to me. This is how I want to do it. And I, I'm all over the place. And I'm like, let's build this and let's build that. And I yeah. want to do this next. And I want to do that. Yeah. And I just kind of, I don't think like other people, you know, and how I, I put things together as and, well. <laughs> yeah. And I don't. And mm -hmm. I think people want you they they if they're linear like that they don't understand it if you don't Correct. think like that and i i remember saying to my husband one day tony i don't get why people struggle with that i'm just like everybody else and my husband was like what'd you just say mm -hmm. and i said i'm just like everyone else he's like oh husbands are great grounders aren't they you mine's are told me my brain so is far <laughs> from like anybody else out there i promise you that he said <laughs> that is the biggest struggle that they have because they yes. can't they, they can't, can't get think it. like you, yeah. you know, yeah. we've had lots of conversations lately about the yeah. way that we communicate and, you know, we've been together for a pretty long time and to discover, oh my God, he really doesn't think anything like I think has been a life changer for us. Cause now I go, okay, so now I have to put this into husband speak versus Tony speak so that mm -hmm. we can at least be on the same page. And it's fun so understanding how other people think and engage and, and all the rest of it. Colleen, before we run out of time, though, you have a special giveaway for our listeners. Would you like to tell them about that? Yeah, you know, I wanted to create, because, you know, I've got my book. It yes. talks about the stepping into the spotlight to expand your influence and attract the right customers. Um, but that could be a bigger read for someone. So mm. what I did was I took some pieces from one of the chapters in the book and I broke it down to just seven ah. easy ways that you can expand your influence and attract your dream clients. And these are easy ways that you can apply. Anybody can apply this to their business today. Visibility is key. I yes. promise you, if no one knows who you are, you're not going to be able to grow your business. You have mm -hmm. to have visibility. So these are simple little ways and tasks that you can put into your regular day or your regular week or insert into your business that are very easy of, the, of ways you can get more visibility. And I'll, I'll just give you an example of one of them. Running your own podcast is an amazing way to get visibility, right? Correct. Because your message is out there to um, hundreds, to thousands, or however many listeners you have. Also, being a guest on someone else's Definitely. podcast is one 
to how many thousands of people. So mm -hmm. not just always building your own platforms, but, but utilizing the platforms of others mm -hmm. that they have built and others mm -hmm. events. So mm -hmm. that's one easy way that you can spread your message to tens of thousands, hundreds Definitely. of thousands, millions of listeners mm -hmm. quickly without you having to have one-on-one-on-one-on-one, -on -one -on -one -on -one, you know, yeah. with everyone and networking events. So just one way. Yeah. yeah. So wherever you're watching this interview, there will be a link to Colleen's giveaway for you to download and have to help expand your influence. Colleen, I want to finish up with one of my favorite questions, and that is what's next for you and where do you see yourself in five years? Okay. So what's next for me is, um, a lot of humility this year in letting go and letting God lead more. That is oh, really big for me. Yeah. And where I see myself in five years is sitting on the porch in my cabin with my husband and I. And where's your um, cabin? It, it's up in uh, northern Arizona where we live. <gasps> so up in northern Arizona, up in the oh, mountains. It's all snowy oh, up there right now. Oh. Oh, I'm and so we jealous. just, we just bought five acres of land. So I oh. put stuff on my vision board every year and every year, a little, we get a little closer. And, um, in five years, I see myself sitting on the porch, uh, with my husband, enjoying the fruits of our labor of, yeah. of the dreams and the visions that we have and building memories with our family. I also see, um, that my community um, builds to a legacy that mm. other women can run. And that will be mm. something that will go on for decades for them to be able to, mm. you know, continue to be connected. Mm. And I really do see spreading the message more mm. of, mm. you know, having faith and believing in yourself and confidence mm. and what that means for each individual woman to step into mm. her power and not give it away, but keep that mm. ignited at all times. That's what I see in five years. Absolutely. That yeah. key piece about backing yourself, because you're always, there are always going to pe be people that say negative things. You are always going to get negative views. You are always going to get people who don't yeah. resonate with what you say. So you need to absolutely believe and back yourself against anything else. Because 100%. no one can tell you your vision and dream, can they, Colleen? No one has the right to dissuade you from what you that God-given vision and mission that you see for your life. No one has the right to take yeah. that away from you, to comment on that. Yes, they can they can give you direction and guidance and wisdom, but at the end of the day, you have to fundamentally believe in yourself and back yourself, don't you? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Colleen Biggs, thank you so much for sharing with us today on the Everyday Business Show. I am delighted that we had time to connect and do this interview. You are a blessing to the world, the bless a blessing to women across the globe. And I encourage you to connect with Colleen. We will have a list of all of her socials, the giveaways attached to this interview. And I encourage you to reach out, connect with this amazingly beautiful woman. And that, my friends, is your lot for this week. Thank you, Colleen. Thanks, Tony. shows with business owners that puts them in front of a global audience and in behind those shows is a whole range of things from digital magazines to social media to blogging to email to lead generation just a whole range of things 